the internet and and computer software industries um, like every other entertainment industry are reaching as young as they possibly can trying to open new markets um, I think that there is a strong belief among many parents that if they don't get their kids on keyboards on computers online early that they're going to get left behind by the future um, you know that that couldn't be more wrong um, but most people have to do it to realize it basically um, it's sort of akin to saying well if my kid isn't driving by the time they're two they'll never learn to drive well there's certain technologies certain abilities that you need to be at a developmental stage a stage of being able to exercise judgment um, that um, really you shouldn't be doing um, that being said um, I think that children should learn to navigate around a com computer probably in their preschool years you know uh, four or five is is plenty early enough to start doing simple things one thing to be aware of is that there are many very consumerist driven websites like webkins and the disney websites um, that are all about getting these kids hooked into brand loyalty and to buying product um, that's really all that's available for them um, in this age group um, and so again the question is what benefit do they derive from it what are you hoping they will get from it um, and make sure that this isn't your own fantasy for what they will get from it but what they actually get from it and um, the other piece, of course, is, is this the best use of, of their time? Or should they be sitting down in a sandbox trying to work out who's going to use the bucket and who's going to use the shovel? Um, these are, you know, much more um, fundamental skills that my concern is that children will lose because we're becoming more isolated by these media. We're becoming more focused on screens instead of on other people. Adolescents have, for good reason, really gone in droves to the social networking sites. Um, interestingly enough, it, it, it has, you know, really, it, it, it's not a brand new thing. It used to be the telephone. Adolescence is a time where we're figuring out who we are, how we're going to present ourselves with the, to the world, and how we're going to interact with the world. Um, and that's a very, very scary experience. Um, we are intensely self-conscious as adolescents. Um, every little pimple drives us crazy. Um, no one else sees it, but for us, it's the end of the world. Um, and these sites allow us the opportunity to, in essentially uh, a safer feeling place, to reach out and try to be someone that we think we might want to be. Um, there are potentially some problems in that, however, and that, you know, is that, you know, unlike a space where you're meeting people in real life, you can't see who you're talking to. Not really. You can see whatever they put up, whatever photograph they put up, whatever avatar they put up, but that's something that they can choose and it could not even be them. Um, so I think that social networking sites are potentially a great way of sorting through all one's various possibilities and sort of focusing one's persona, one's public persona. Um, but they really need to be done in, in, in a way that is controlled and aware of the potential downsides. Unfortunately, because adolescents don't have don't have complete brain development and the areas that are still missing are areas of what we call executive function areas of impulse control of sort of future thinking cause and effect understanding things and the the parts of the brain that we used to call the superego or the conscience that allow us to exercise judgment and take care of ourselves are really incomplete until the mid twenties or so um, and so they will not have sort of the circuits in place to protect themselves from all of the various things that can happen. Now, 
admittedly, a lot of that is, you know, sort of becoming jaded and, and defensive and, you know, crabby old adults like me. But it's also a way of understanding that everything is not what it appears to be. And um, we need to go into using these tools with that knowledge and also with the knowledge of the incomplete developmental process that adolescents are in. There are many factors that make it hard to quote monitor um, a, an adolescent's internet use. Uh, everything from Wi-Fi throughout the home to the fact that cell phones are you know, now basically platforms for internet um, use um, to the fact that they're at school or in libraries accessing the internet. Um, in general, it is better to have the computer use in the home be in public open spaces um, just because you know you can get into all kinds of trouble when you've got the door locked behind you. Um, but even so, you can do that at someone else's house. You can, you can go elsewhere. So this is a perfect example of how we need to build critical media use and media literacy into kids really from the moment they start using media. So from the moment you first put them in front of Sesame Street at two and a half or three, you can be interacting with them, co-viewing with them, teaching them how this is created. Um, because no matter how wonderful educational TV might be, um, as with any television or any medium, there are things they leave out. There are things that speak to one segment of society but not to another. There's some things that might be offensive to one segment of society. And these are all things that can be learned in terms of being able to see that critically and understand that critically um, and decide for themselves and with respect for themselves and their well-being what they want to spend time with and with among the stuff they're spending time with what they're going to buy into so it gives them that layer of not being snookered and one ad real advantage of that is that kids hate to be snookered kids absolutely hate to be manipulated told what to do um, and treated with disrespect as if they're dumb or manipulable um, and when you teach kids even a few simple tips about how this website or this television show or this movie um, creates the illusion that something is fact when it may or may not be um, they're like smokers who've quit in terms of their militancy and they're wonderful because they will share it with their friends and peer-to-peer -peer teaching is far more effective than the teaching that a doctor or a, a school teacher or a parent can do um, so to my mind, the internet is the perfect place, particularly with how it's evolving, um, to use it as an example for the protection that we should build in is not legislative, it's not even parental, because most of those are restrictive and punitive in nature, but it's from within. It is the glass half full approach of, I want to learn how to use these media in ways that um, inform, educate, connect me with other people um, and make me better and I'm going to walk away from and avoid those things that drag me down, put me at risk for eating disorders or sexual risk behavior or violence um, because it, it's really about them taking care of themselves. We can't take care of them.